By the way, some U.S. car manufacturers, to Edward's point, beyond motorcycles, are saying this could hit them very hard at a time when uh, auto sales are soaring. Certainly, we saw that out of Ford and the likes of Fiat Chrysler. Uh, and now the U.S. Automobile Association, among others, saying um, tariffs on, on vehicles uh, it could, could bring the average price of a new car from 32000 to upwards of 37000 I don't know how they arrive at that or whether they're going by a sort of a general across-the-board uh, average for, for everything, including uh, SUVs to, to, to cars here. But uh, they're worried. Uh, it, this goes beyond GM. This goes beyond some of the key manufacturers, Mazda and their U.S. Uh, chief indicating the same, that this is something that uh, they don't like to see. And, and the fear is already unnerving some potential buyers. Uh, to uh, the Group C, I, oh, uh, David, I hope I'm uh, announcing uh, Pronouncing that correctly, David. Also, uh, former Dallas Fed advisor Danielle DiMartino Booth and Schaefer Asset Management Guru uh, on Schaefer on all of these developments. Dan, ended with you on your take and what's what's prompting concern among the automakers that this is going to dramatically lift the costs of their vehicles. Do you agree with that? Thirty-two to suddenly a thirty-seven thousand dollar vehicle average. Well, I agree that it's going to increase the costs. I just don't know the exact numbers. I don't know where they're coming up with the numbers, but it, it, it will be a problem. The, the tariff war is, uh, is going to escalate because the other countries, uh, Neil, are uh, most of them are communist or they're not democracies like the United States. So they're trying to protect their people. So, uh, you know, as far as the GM cars increasing in cost, I'm not sure that's going to be right. They're raising the tariffs in the other countries. In effect, they should be lowering the costs to adjust for the tariffs. Um, you know, David, looking at all of this, they're preparing themselves for the worst. I noticed the president has been uh, reticent to, to, to criticize the GM and some of these other guys who come out with these statements, not treating them, for example, like Harley Davidson, which has already announced that it's shipping a lot of its jobs overseas. So he's not jumped on that with these guys. Why do you think? I think that he probably wants to avoid it escalating into a narrative where it looks like the very people he has said he's doing some of this to protect and uh, being the, you know, the voice kind of is representing people uh, that he says he wants to protect. And in fact, they're the ones very disgruntled. That's a lot of what that Harley Davidson kind of uh, group represented. That would certainly be true of American automakers. And so I think overall, this thing is getting a little bit out of control from the president, uh, the unintended consequence and the reality of tariffs being what they are, a tax, and they are a tax on the end user of the product, uh, that reality, I think, is creeping into the dialogue that the president has to deal with politically. You know, Danielle, how do you think this is playing out? Because depending on the day, the more likely it looks that, the, you know, a trade war worse is coming, the worse it does for stocks. Of late, the less likely it looks, obviously, the, the less likely. But um, many in the market seem to be expressing confidence that this president they doubted going in to handle or keep his temper in check, that he served them well and they're trusting him or giving him a, a little bit of latitude. What do you make of that? Well, look, he's certainly not backing down. Uh, but you made a point earlier about Mazda. The, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce uh, put out a study, and it was highlighted in the Wall Street Journal, that showed the, the, the states that will be affected the most by, t by tariffs, by the trade war going forward. And lo and behold, Al Alabama and South Carolina were, were second and third on that list, Texas, of course, being number one where I am. Uh, but, but if you look at Alabama and South Carolina as two examples, um, that's where Daimler and, and where BMW have their their U.S. production facilities, and they're saying that they're looking at potential job cuts. I think one of the reasons that the, that the president is rightly treading lightly is because we've had so many of these foreign um, car producers come into the United States, set up production facilities, and hire American workers. So the, the, it's, it, again, this is very tenuous territory that he's, that he's over right now, and, and we hope that he doesn't overreach. American, American households, people who voted for Trump are extremely happy because the last thing that he's done is back down. But I would say that he needs to really be careful here. Well, you know, sometimes, Dan, it sounds like uh, me offering people dietary advice. I wouldn't go there. So when the president was talking about how unfair <laughs> some of these countries are to us, and I come to discover that when it comes to light trucks, we slap 20 percent tariffs on those that come from abroad. 
we're not exactly saints on this issue. So I have to rely on averages that are put out by the various countries, their average tariffs, if you will, and how they all factor in together. Uh, we have among the world's lowest at three and a half percent, touche for us, but Canada, who we're going after, like you know what, uh, about four and a half percent. So I'm wondering if we're being selective in our rage or hypocritical in our rage and it's backfiring on us or could. I don't, I don't agree with that. I think that we have the lower tariffs in the, around the world, and the other countries are raising their tariffs or have had these high tariffs preventing our goods to get in there. But there's a 1% difference between us and Canada, then. I mean, we are going to war with these guys, our northern neighbors, well, Canada, for a 1% difference. Yeah, but can, right. Canada hasn't been an issue until recently. All right, there's, there's global tariffs with other major uh, counterparty traders, that, uh, trade company, uh, countries we work with. I mean, Canada just came to light recently. It's been exposed. And yes, it it's sounds like it's for small, silliness. But this it's very is a, This is a rounding error in area. By all means, go after, you know, and Danielle, that's what I'm saying. Go after China. I mean, there are blatant abuses. There are rigged economies. Sure. There are rigged currency. But, you know, you've got to have a more surgical strategy here. And I don't see it. Well, you know, look, listen, even yeah. going after China is going to have its own its own costs and its benefits. If you look at the states of Illinois, if you look at Iowa, they're massive soybean exporters to China. Um, half of Illinois, Illinois is the largest soybean producer in, in, in the country. Half of Illinois soybean exports last year went to China. 57% of America's soybean output last year was sold to China. And these state comptrollers are going to have real problems on their hands beginning Friday when these tariffs are implemented. And again, this is in the heartland uh, of Trump voters. You, uh, again, I, I'll, I'll reiterate what I said before. We need to tread very lightly because we don't know what some of the what, what some of the blowback is going to be in our own communities, in our own economies. Well, you know, David, I, I do know that when to Danielle's point about what's happening, the farmers and all, of course, we're looking at soybean prices in and out of 10 year lows. So they've tumbled in the futures markets, even ahead of tariffs, just on the idea that the prospects don't look good for China buying as much, if, if at all, for a while. So I understand that fear, but do you think it reverberates beyond this or this, this game uh, or strategy of the president to sort of get the world to come to us for fear that it could get worse is enough to get the deal done? It all depends on how much the president actually believes some of the rather incredible things that he has said. I don't think he really believes it. I think that he is positioning for some form of a negotiation. And I don't mean this critically, but I think he's gearing up for something that will provide superficial, face-saving political value. But if he really believed that tariffs don't hurt anyone, if he really believes it's easy to win a trade war, then I'd be very concerned. This He can't have have it both ways. To the other uh, uh, panelists' comment, we can't say that because of this trade deficit with China, they're being so unfair to us, and yet we have a trade surplus with Canada, and Canada gets to be a bad guy. The fact of the matter is there's different reasons with different products and sectors with different countries. But the biggest thing, Neil, that gets forgotten from this conversation for free marketeer guys like us is countries don't trade with countries. Companies trade with companies. And at the end of the day, more trade is better because this is voluntary exchange. More tariffs is worse because it's a bad allocation of capital. It's that simple. And I think that the blowback effect that you're wondering about could very well get worse. But I also believe the president still has some great people advising him. And I'm hopeful we unwind this thing sooner than later. It's not good for the economy or the market. Dan, is it your thought Neil. that if this drags on a while, regardless of who you, you blame or, or not blame, that it, it, it could have a damaging effect on the markets and the economy, that the, the growth we're expecting from the quarter just completed, which could be over 4 percent, who knows, uh, it's a short lived event? Yeah. Yeah, Neil, absolutely. I just want to, you just had soybeans on the screen there, and I watched, of course, a lot of these markets. The grain markets have adjusted for the higher tariffs. So if the farmers are selling the grains in the $8 range, where they were $11 the other day, 
uh, or uh, months ago, then they're adjusting for the tariffs already. And that's the problem that we're going to see. And relating that to the stock market is this deflationary issue. And I know uh, Danielle spoke about it the other day on TV, and I've spoke about it with you many, many times. The yield curve or the flattening of the 30-year Treasury, the 10-year Treasury to the 2-year Treasury is signaling that we are going into a major deflationary environment. So, yes, the tariffs that, that Trump is trying to compete with globally is going to put price pressure to adjust to be able to make sales. And one other point, people That's still right. need to eat. China still needs to buy soybeans to feed their people. So the soybean adjustment and the tariff adjustment, I think it's not going to have an effect. It's going to hurt our farmers in this country, and it's going to cause them to plant less. And that's going to create a major shortage of soybeans, I think, going into the next year. But they're adjusting for it so that they can survive. And again, people need to eat. So I'm not so worried about the food side of this uh, spectrum. I'm worried about the manufacturing side with stocks that are involved in uh, overseas sales with services and hard asset products. That could be where we'll see the, the major pinch on it. And I do believe it's going to affect the stock market. I'm very bearish. Well, farmers need to eat, too. Our, our farmers, too. And right now, someone's eating their lunch. Uh, we'll see what happens. But, guys, thank you all very, very much.